When you launch ZBrush, likely you'll be presented with this sphere that you can start sculpting on right away. You'll also see that Lightbox is open. Lightbox is this strip of items that you see here at the top, which allows you to quickly select from several tools, recent tools, and navigate through your hard drive for other items. To close down Lightbox and start sculpting on this sphere, I simply just have to click anywhere inside the canvas. I can then click on the sphere and start sculpting. To open up Lightbox again, I'm going to click the Lightbox icon we see here up at the upper left. I can then find a tool that I want to work with, like the demo head, and then double click on it. Because my sphere was in 3D, edit mode, as we explained earlier, it automatically switched to the demo head, which is again now in this 3D edit mode, and I can start working on the demo head and modifying and sculpting. I can click Lightbox again, switch to another tool, this time I'll double click on the Rhino, and then that'll be loaded directly inside the canvas in 3D edit mode. At this point, let's reset everything back to the way it was when we first started ZBrush. But we're not going to have to close ZBrush and reopen ZBrush to do this. We'll simply go back up to Preferences, click Init ZBrush, Yes, and then we're going to click this button up here on the right that says Default Z-Script. That's going to load that sphere back in for us. You'll notice right now that this sphere has been loaded in, in a 3D state, and we can simply click and start sculpting on the sphere. You'll also notice that your cursor is doubled. So as I sculpt on the right hand side, you can see everything's happening and being mirrored over in the left hand side. This is because we have symmetry active. To move in and out of symmetry, all I need to do is simply press the X key, which is the keyboard shortcut for turning symmetry on and off. Now you notice that my cursor only works on one side. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that last step. I'm going to press the letter X to turn symmetry back on. And this time I'm going to hold down the Alt key, which will let me sculpt into the surface. I can also hold the Shift key and smooth back some of the sculpting information. I'll let go of Shift and continue sculpting on my surface. Hold the Alt key to sculpt into the surface. Let go of Alt, and you can see between holding Alt, let going Alt, and then holding the Shift key, you can really start to edit your surface quite a bit. Take note that we're going to talk a lot about these features later on in more advanced videos, especially symmetry, because right now we're working with symmetry on the x-axis, but there is a lot of different symmetry types that we'll talk about in later videos. While you're working and sculpting on your model, you may move it and scale it outside the viewable area. If for some reason you do this and you can't find your model, you can simply bring it back to center by pressing the letter F on your keyboard. Another thing I'd like to point out is while you're working with your model, it might get rotated in a specific axis, and you might want to bring it back to a very orthographic state. So to do this, I'll simply rotate it into the position I want, and as I come close to that position, I'll hold the Shift key. And you notice it'll snap automatically to that state. So for instance, if I wanted to look at this model completely from the side, I could rotate it, and as I get to the side, I'll hold Shift. And you'll see it'll snap completely to the side. Same thing with the top view. I'll rotate it, hold Shift, and it'll snap into that position. So you can get very specific looks at your model. Now you'll also notice that your model by default is rotating around the last point in which you sculpt it. So for instance, I'll just do a little sculpt here on the cheek. And then you'll notice that it's rotating around that area that my cursor sculpted on. That's because I have local active. When you have local active, it's always going to put the focus on the last area that you sculpted. If I turn off local, you'll see even if I sculpt right there on the cheek, it's not going to be rotating around that point. So depending on your preferences, you may want to turn off or on local. If you're working very close on your model, for instance right here on the eye, 
you might want to turn local on. That way when I rotate it'll stay focused in on that area. If I turn local off you'll see that I can actually rotate out of the area that I'm sculpting and that may not be what you want. So again I'll press the letter F, get everything framed, hold shift, and I'm looking at my model straight on. 